Hello everybody and welcome back to Anadonia. I'm not joined by anyone today and that's because Ruby is on holiday. Uh, so, a bit of context for this episode before we get started. We tried recording this one about a week ago, uh, but the server kept failing, I, my, my client kept failing, and my recording software kept crashing. Uh, so ultimately we weren't able to recover any of my footage. Ruby managed to get a lot of footage, but actually decided to go on holiday before sending it to me. So if I wanted to um, use it, I'd have to wait until next week, which I don't really want to do, especially when I want to get back to recording. So, on to today's video. Since it is just me today, we are going to be taking this episode in a more star sick style of things, just because personally, when I'm on my own, that's how I prefer to record, because it's uh, easier than trying to bounce conversation off of the fucking air. But, with that being said, let's not waste any time, let's get into today's episode. So, before we do get into today's episode... <laughs> Uh, just, uh, take a look at this for me, shall you? Uh, can you? And for those of you curious as to what that is, let me go show you. So what you just saw is this thing over here. This is the casing I built uh, to house what is going to become the force field projector that's going to be prote protecting uh, the top of our base. Now, why do we need one of these? <laughs> let me show you that as well. So, uh, yeah. Do you remember this? You know, the, the base we raided uh, some time ago now? that is now currently under the occupation of the Furry Rebellion. Well, if we just fly up into the air for a second, uh, notice how the entirety of the Earth here is completely scorched to death, uh, so much so that it literally solidified the ocean. Um, one of these 
did this just by landing. Um, and, 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 and let me be clear, this is landing in conditions that aren't optimal to, you know, be burnt to death. So if we go over back over to our base, which is, you know, a grassy sort of uh, dip hill area thing, can you imagine the damage having a couple of those drop onto here would cause? It's not loading in. Hold on. There we go. We've got most of it loaded in now. But that drop thing that we just saw, yeah, they weren't using that to attack. They were just trying to establish a forward command post, meaning they've probably got much bigger ships that can do a lot more damage and just a lot more of them. And I don't fancy having them drop directly on my asshole, which is why I built this and that and that. And that over there. You only saw me build this one. It doesn't mean it was the only one I built. But if you remember, this is just the casing. We need to actually build the internals now. So in order to keep us safe, we're going to build what is known as a force field projector. Or actually, I don't believe it's called that. If I type in force field, uh, yeah, the block doesn't come up. What we're looking for, I believe it's a shield projector? That's not how you spell shield. There we go. We need a shield projector. And we don't just need the tier 1 shield projector. We need the tier 4 shield projector, which, um, just putting it out there, very expensive. But, you know, taking this one step at a time, let's start with the tier 1 for now. Also, uh, here's a quick little time lapse of me uh, putting down all of this glowstone just so you, you, you can see me actually doing it. Right then, so as I mentioned earlier, we did attempt to record this video once before. So you might be thinking, hey Drifter, where are the results? Well, they're in Ruby's inventory because he also logged off without giving me any of the stuff. Um, so we're going to have to start from scratch, or nearly from scratch. We have a mob fan in here. I don't actually think we need this, so I'm not sure why it's in here, but we have access to it. Either way, to create the shield projector tier 1, we're going to need obsidian, which we have a lot of. We're going to need redstone, which we have a lot of. We're going to need gold, which we don't have too much of. A redstone torch, which again, pretty simple, and a machine frame. Now, these have an EMC value, but I believe we actually just have one of these lying around, so I'm going to go check the computer. And if not, then I'll just build this in the computer. I forget that you have to feed this computer. We're definitely going to need to repl replace this eventually with, like, an actual power generation source. Because as fun as this is, it gets very annoying very quickly. Uh, machine... Frame. Okay, we don't have any, but do we have the materials? No, we don't. We're missing blue dye, which comes from lapis which we have a lot of, so all we have to do is take some of this and turn it into blue dye. And boop, and boop, there we go. Give us those machine frames, that's 11. Again, they've got an EMC value, so we can just get an infinite amount of these, but you know, the less we have to dupe, the better, I suppose. So, shield, pr that. There's something wrong with my H key. I press the H key and it just doesn't H. Okay, so it looks like all we're missing from the shield projector is the gold ingots and the redstone torch. Now, redstone torch, we're missing the stick. <laughs> How are we missing a stick? We have plenty of wood. Let's, uh, you know what, I'm just going to get all of the materials and I'm going to build the, the shield projector tier one. And we just need to turn the golden nuggets into golden ingots. There we go. Just give me those. Give me all of those. Give me 15. And then we can build the shield projector tier 1. Just like that. There we go. Now, this also has an EMC value, which I'm getting kind of tired of saying, if I'm going to be honest. But I don't think we're going to need to EMC the shield projector. We're just going to have to EMC the final form of it. Uh, because the next step up requires, again, obsidian, some blocks of redstone this time, and the first shield projector. So, if we just uh, click on this, get ourselves those four blocks of redstone, nice and simple. I think we've actually filled the computer. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so the computer is full. 
It, you can still put some things in there, but it can't be anything new. And here is the tier 2 projector. Just like so. And, ooh. Water strainers, I didn't realize we had those in this mod pack. Now, this is where it starts getting expensive. For the tier 3, we need the tier 2, more obsidian, and some dimensional shards. Now, we do have a few of these on surplus, but we don't have as many as you might think. So this is a little bit of an expensive one, okay? But either way, we've got the shield, uh, shield projector tier 3 now, meaning we now have to move on to the shield projector tier 4. But as you might notice, this one requires nether stars. Now, nether stars do have a few crafting recipes, but nothing that can sort of just do it like that, you know, with the snappier fingers. For this one, we are going to need to kill a wither. Um, so let's just have a look. Do we have... No, we don't have any wither skulls in here. Do we have any wither skulls in here? Yes, we do. We have one with a skull. Okay, this isn't as hopeless as we might think. You know, if you showed this to someone playing vanilla, I think they may genuinely shit their pants at how terrifying that box is. I mean, just consider, I managed to get myself over, like, an entire inventory's worth of stack of nether skulls, wither skulls, just like that. Genuinely horrifying. But yeah, the next step, obviously, would be to get the soul sand. Now, I don't actually think we've ever collected soul sand. It's just one of those things that we've never needed to get. So we might actually have to make a trip to the nether here. I am going to check on the computer, make sure there's none in there. But, you know, hand on heart, I do think we're going to have to go to Gehenna for this one. Ignore the fact that I totally nearly forgot about the canon uh, in-universe name for the nether that we came up with or anything like that. <laughs> I'm always 100% uh, remembering all of my lore. And we have no soul sand, so let's go to Gehenna. It feels strange to say out loud, but playing Anadonia the way I would Starsick is actually making me feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm not. Like, just hand on heart, I'm not doing anything wrong, and I know that. But it feels like I am. And ironically, it's because we're making so much progress in such little time. <laughs> I'm going to be real honest. The fact that we are doing as well as we are right now is genuinely the thing throwing me off. Right then, so next things next, we've got to find ourselves that soul sand, although before we do, I'm going to quickly set my waypoint to the nether portal, because all of our waypoints got wiped last time, and I don't want to forget where this is. I, I don't remember how to spell that, so I'm just going to go with nether portal for now. Lovely. Okay, now, this is the tricky part. I don't remember if there's a soul sand valley nearby, so I don't actually know where to start looking. I think I might just have to go forwards for, like, a while until I find something. Is that a furnace? Hang on, is that just... Oh, no. I thought that was a furnace. With a bee. Yeah, I'm staying away from that. Well, it's not soul sand, but I found brimstone. Guess this really is Gehenna. Okay, we've got soul soil, which means soul sand can't be far behind. And I was absolutely right. Yoink. Okay, so, now that we've got the soul sand, we've got the wither skeleton skulls, the only thing left to do is find somewhere safe to fight this thing. Oh, and also get us some armor, because I am wearing none! Now, if memory serves me correctly, I do have some armor already made back over at the Starsick base. However, it's not the best quality armor. So I think we should maybe take advantage of our trip to Super Hell, and maybe we should make some netherite gear. Of course, in order to do that, I'd have to figure out where we put the netherite scraps, because I don't remember. Well, we got obsidian ingots, we've got a ton of daggers of sacrifices, we've got an enchanted golden apple, which reminds me, at some point, I am going to have to set up the enchanted golden apple farm, because there's a very easy way of doing it. Uh, we've got some dimensional shards, we've got a statue. Uh, blocks of diamonds, redstone, watches of flowing time, basils. Yeah, ba ba bas basals, shards, uh, fibers, <sighs> there's nothing in here. And in here we have an ice dragon heart, we've got some diamond boots, some netherite boots, here we go. Feather falling fire protection and soul speed, brilliant for the nether, but not quite what I was after. I've also got a ton of necrotic bones. 
Is there a way to strip netherite from boots? Well, you could upgrade them to all the modium. You could turn them into mecha suit boots, which, um, don't have a valid texture. You could transmute them by infusing them with an element. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but okay. Or we can salvage them for four diamonds and the netherite ingot, which is what we're looking for. And a salvager is crimson iron, a block of iron, obsidian, and a piston, all things that we have access to. Okay, let's get salvaging, shall we?